go. <laughs> All right, secure. Come inside. Check out this place. That's going to be a boutique. And in this video, we're going to show you guys how you can start and open up your own boutique from the ground up. As you guys can see, this place looks like it's falling apart. There might be a dead cat right up there. No, I'm just kidding. There's no dead animals here. This place is literally the bare bones of what you need to actually open up a boutique. So if you've had a vision for it, in this video you're going to learn everything that you need to know in order for it to be successful. And we actually have the owners here. What's up, John? How are you, man? Good to see you, buddy. Hi, John. Thank you. Good to see you, too. Thank you guys for having us out at this uh, location. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Welcome to the Good Wolf Lifestyle Company. Right. It's the very beginning. As it is, yes. <laughs> in, in baby stages, for sure. Right. But. Man, so what, what made you guys choose this location? Well, you know, a couple things. Uh, one being, uh, so this corner has got awesome visibility from two major streets of commerce. And of course, we all know how all the excitement that's happening on Main Street with everything that's opening up. And it's such a thriving community for artists and people with a vision, you know? So uh, people who also want to enjoy a sense of community, you know, within the, the, the Las Vegas area. So that's a big part of, of, of why we chose the Arts District and, and this, this corner uh, in particular. Amazing. I love it. I love, I love where you guys are going with it. And uh, I can't wait to see this transformation from this store and actually make it a reality. So let's, uh, let's, let's make it happen. All right, you guys, some of you guys may be watching and wondering, John, it's almost 2020. Why would we spend thousands to even hundreds of thousands to open up our own store when you've been telling us that we could start a clothing line for less than zero dollars? <laughs> no, but in all seriousness, guys, the reason that boutiques are thriving is because big box truly is dying. And if you're able to create an experience with authentic products, you're now able to really build up a fan base of loyal customers in whatever town you may be. So a boutique is a perfect hybrid between the online world and the real world. And as you guys can see, it's not cheap to open up something like this. And it definitely takes some creativity. From the types of products that you'll be purchasing, you wanna make sure that you know it really stands out and creates an experience. But I really think, in all honesty, the even bigger reason that I wanted to share this video with you guys is to really talk about the thought process and what it's actually gonna take for you guys to go from an employee to an entrepreneur. You see the founders of this business actually quit their full-time job and they spent their savings into opening up this location. So in this video, I really wanna share, I wanna have them share exactly what thought process they had to go through and some of the things that they had to think about before they made that leap. And I really feel that this video is gonna help you guys. So what better way to actually do this than by talking to one of the founders himself, hey, Sean, what going? up, man? Good to see you. Dude, thank you so much for, for having us out here, dude. The last time we were out here, this place looked worse than like a crackhead at the break of dawn. It was pretty bad, but you guys did an amazing transformation, thank dude. Thank you so much. It's like legit thing that you guys saw how this looked before and now this is like a real thing it's not made up <laughs> so no, it's real how did you guys come up with the name like how did the good wolf come to be and like what's the meaning of it and how did you guys decide on that name i think a lot of people watching are always like what should i name my clothing line or my boutique and like right. you guys came up with such a good name like how did it come to well, be thank you so anyway. much so the the tale of two wolves is really the, the the backbone of the good wolf lifestyle company and if you're familiar with it it's about a uh cherokee uh, uh, telling his, his, his grandson a story about a battle within each human being that consists of uh, a good side and a bad side, or a good wolf and a bad wolf. Mm -hmm. So day in and day out, these two wolves battle each other, and, uh, which, which, uh, which you know, uh, um, spawned a, a question in the grandson's uh, mind, which, which was, okay, well, which of these two wolves win? The grand, or the grandfather then said, it's the one you feed. You know, and Powerful. so um, what? And so that really resonated with myself and my wife because we, we, uh, we understand how much of a choice it is to to feed positivity, feed courage, feed loyalty, and 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 just feed that good side as opposed to giving in into something you know negative that and that's not not so positive obviously right. so. so it's essentially you're going to be right. feeding the wolf that you feed right and, and the good yeah, wolf absolutely. is absolutely <laughs> that's the one that wins so so we hope here at the good wolf lifestyle company just to help reinforce the good and uh through product 
um, and you know through through household uh, pieces, through decor, and even just through conversation and connection, we hope to really you know reinforce that idea with our shoppers and our guests. Oh, that's awesome, dude. Yeah. So. How did you guys come to actually, uh, you know, decide on this location in specific, uh, in specific? Like, did you guys have a budget in mind when obviously you needed to have a budget in mind because you were gonna like put your sp your savings into this right. business, right? So, like, can you share some of the some of the expenses or the budgets that people should be, you know, cognizant of if they're thinking about opening up their right. own spot? Well, so as you know, this area uh, it, it happens to be a, a time where this area is taken off yeah. in the arts district. So you'll see a lot of breweries, a lot of places to hang out and eat. You know, some of the, some of our top restaurants in Las Vegas are actually coming down here for another location or maybe a brand new look or, or, or maybe a replacement location and so we knew that hey if we didn't make it happen uh, when we did if we waited if we told ourselves like we had been for the past you know few years that we'd wait until it makes more sense then it would never have made as much sense as it, as it did so we knew that going into it hey we would have to keep you know our initial rent cost um, under let's five thousand mm dollars -hmm. right so we came across a, pop a, a property and this is after you know touring and visiting multiple sites in the area that may have made sense but um, you know sometimes th some doors shut as they say mm -hmm. while another one opens and so this one opened and it happened to be you know on the corner of commerce which is which it, which is fed from maine um, with two amazing, um, well, it's just with a lot of visibility, yeah. you know, yeah. and so that's what uh, Lisa and I really, really um, uh, took to, mm -hmm. especially when, when, when we do want to create something more than, than just an average shopping experience, right. you know. So. so talk to us about like uh, the products, like how much did you guys have to kind of save up to purchase? There's a lot of inventory here and a lot of good inventory. Right. So like tell us about the purchasing of the actual inventory or like what type of budgets did you guys set for yourselves? And was there any other costs that like kind of surprised you guys or delays that might have happened as you were opening it? Um, Lisa and I, we really had an idea and, uh, and, and, and a vibe uh, of going, it, you know, uh, especially just having spent so much time in, in the arts district, we knew what, what type of guests we wanted to go after. However, we also do uh, believe that we could service every single uh, person in Las Vegas, mm -hmm. you know? So we had our, our, our anchor brands, especially on the guy side, that we feel like okay, so we can build around these collections mm -hmm. and um, and continue to service and and, and really uh, uh, find a way to invite every single person that we come across into our shop. And you mentioned like opening POs for some of these brands, right? So like yes. some of these new these new brands that that you might be approaching, right? Yes. Perhaps there's people out there watching that are like, how do I purchase this brand, right? Right. So like, what type of commitments did you guys have to make to these brands in order to let them know that you're serious about selling their product? Right. So I I would say something that you know reasonable to expect would be uh, with a lot of these opening orders, which of course when you're opening a new store, every order is going to be an opening order. Um, so so uh, the more that you can get those opening orders to come down or, or, or maybe even uh, space it out to where you're not um, you know, investing so much in that one order, you know, especially before you really have a chance to, to, to find out who your guest is initially, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. um, because maybe the guest that you felt like would be shopping you, it could be completely different. If you're passionate about a certain collection, definitely go after it, but don't say yes to every single uh, manufacturer or, or don't say yes to every single vendor coming your way because there's always someone out there who might not have a certain minimum so I uh, say so your average brand might come at you with a one thousand to a two thousand dollar opening order mm. and so we did a couple big brands with that um, with that with that strict policy which is totally cool because that's something that we're passionate about so that's why we said yes mm. going into it you know we felt like hey if we can get these like a couple of brands that we're passionate we we know that the guest is going to feed, or and our, our customers will feed off of that passion, right. you know, and and we're not going to regret anything we pick up because we have had our eye on it. So it's almost like your anchor brands that allow you to go out and, yes. and place orders with other right. brands, letting them know, hey, we're selling this brand in right. our store, right? Right. And, and, so. and in terms of apparel, you know, it's going to be it's 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 a lot of recognition, you know, and so uh, these these companies, especially getting started. They take care of all the marketing costs for you when it comes to the brand. So right. in terms of using it for your website or using it for your social media, it's nothing that you really have to invest in to build yourself. When these companies based in New York and LA and Australia, they have marketing departments which which help the little guys out. Right. You know, so That's you don't cool. have to invest too much in 
photography and getting models sorted and things like that. So all you have to do is get their permission and post it. That's actually a really good, uh, it's a really good thing that you just noted because it does take a lot of time to photograph a new brand and to create an aesthetic around it, right? Absolutely. So tell us a little bit more about what you had to do to mentally prepare to actually open up and kind of take the dive from employee to entrepreneur. Like what were some of the things and the mindset that you had to like, or some of the things that you're still overcoming or perhaps you know you had to really overcome at the beginning Talk to us about the mentality and the shift that people need to take in order to quit their full-time jobs and jump into a business like this. The biggest one would just be you're never off the clock, you know, and I think even if you're currently working a corporate job or an eight to five job or working for someone else, which is of course can sustain an amazing lifestyle, but if you train yourself now to, um, you know, just to kind of live your position or live what you do, you know, day in, day out, I think, once you do decide to take the plunge or take the leap, as they say, is you're not going to have to make that much of a mental adjustment if you start now where you're at. You know, even if you're not completely passionate about it, you know, you, obviously you're you know you're doing it for a reason. So if you start there, you know, you're not going to have to you know uh, train you know and and get that mental endurance that 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 it takes to you know to to start something and sometimes feel like you're spinning your wheels. But if you again, like just like like I just mentioned, if you just keep that vision and that um, and that path in in sight, you're never going to stray too far off, and you'll know that what you're doing is is all of your efforts are are are, are feeding something positive. You you had a full time job, both of you, you and your wife both did, yes. right, in the corporate type, in, in the corporate world for right. retail. So what were some of your like after work activities that you might have been doing to build this up? Because this didn't come overnight, right? You guys were very meticulous about the type of products you you put out from leasing this building, right? It, it all took a lot of time. So what were some of the things that people can do immediately if they have a full-time job that demands their career? Is there a certain thing that you would advise that created the biggest results for you guys to be able to make the leap? Yep, I would say the biggest thing that really uh, helped us turn the corner was you talk about it. If it's a group of you or if it's in my situation, like myself and my wife, we, we, we vocalized it. We put it out into the universe. And then I think the next step would be talk, talk about it with friends, family, strangers, and, and they might give you, you know, a couple curious looks, but if you believe it, you can achieve it to sound as corny as that may be, but it's the truth. If, if you honestly believe like it's gonna happen, and if there's no other way it's not gonna, or the, and if there's no way it's not gonna happen, then it's going to happen. But I, but I think vocalizing it and not just keeping it stirring around in your brain, but you have to put it into the universe and, uh, and then your actions and your body will follow. I think a lot of things come together the same way, right? right? So like, once you start putting it out to other people in the community, your friends, family, they might say, hey, I know this person that knows this person that knows, yep. right? And then you just start building this thing up out of nowhere. You're like, I, I found an artist, right? Like there's a lot of amazing art around here and right. products and I'm sure it all came through word of mouth after talking to people. Totally, right? and uh, just to add to that, I think um, the biggest thing is just, you know, getting, getting opinions, mm -hmm. you know, finding out where, uh, in our situation where they shop, you know, what they're missing in a shopping experience, what they like about shopping, where they do shop. You know, I feel like you can't stop asking those questions because even if, let's say you're switching industries, it, you're all, I mean, in a lot of ways you are, you know, forming a new identity for yourself, mm -hmm. you know, and if you get others to see it that way, you know, you'll, like, they can be the ones that give you courage to do it because in your mind you're telling yourself, well, I told John and I got to ask him and pick his brain about all these things, whether, you know, what, you know, about his shopping experience and where he'd like to shop and why isn't he shopping in certain stores. Mm -hmm. And so he's already expecting that. So it's almost like not only do you not want to let yourself down, but you also don't want to let the people that are around you down because you've already put it out into the universe and they expect it from you at some point too. So at this time, I'd like to answer some questions you may have about opening up your own location, such as what business licenses you'll need to get and what type of investment is required to make your dream a reality. Now, the first license that you're going to need is to actually get a state business license and registration. Now, at this point, it's highly encouraged and recommended that you guys consider an LLC or perhaps a corporation since you're opening up a physical space. That way you can reduce your personal liability should anything happen. But always talk to your legal counsel to make sure that you guys are getting exactly what you need. From there, you also need your city permits for your business operation, and finally your sales tax permit to be able to order wholesale and report your taxable sales to the government. Now, one big tip I recommend you guys if you're thinking about signing a lease to open up a boutique is I highly encourage that you visit your local permit and zoning board before you sign it. 
all right that way you can get the green light to receive the permits you need before signing it and making the deposits and a lot of the times they're not refundable so it's not up to the landlord to make sure that it falls within the zone that you guys intend to use it with so make sure you do your research before signing anything and finally, to open a store like this, you'll be looking around a $50,000 investment in order to sell merchandise and make it fully operational. Now, this includes the products and the fixtures that you're going to need in order to create the feeling that you'd like to portray. And depending on the aesthetic of the store, you could definitely save some money on the fixtures. As you guys can see here, Sean and Lisa came up with an aesthetic that didn't require brand new fixtures. This allowed them to go out into the market and buy fixtures that they could probably get for a couple hundred bucks versus thousands when opening up a brand new store with brand new fixtures. Now, if you have any questions about obtaining your business license or any other startup things that we discussed, I've actually linked a video in the description down below where we walk you through obtaining a business license and I highly encourage that you watch this as soon as this video is done. Mm. There's parfum in here, guys. I learned something very important. Parfum is an oil-based substance. And, uh, you know, instead of having people spray the parfum and like wasting your inventory, you essentially just spray it in here once every seven days. It's a key tip to actually, you know, keeping your store and dynamic flowing right. Um, but I really, anyways, what I really wanted to jump into right now is the thought process that came to actually creating this store, right? So like, how did they decide on which fixtures or which products they were gonna bring in? And of course, it's gonna be a perfect leeway in a segment to introduce the second founder of the business. Hi, John, uh, thank how you. are you? Thank you for sharing your expertise and your knowledge with us. Yeah, well, thanks for coming out today. You guys did an amazing job. I was I was joking with, uh, with Sean earlier about how this looked like a, like this place looked like a crackhead at the break of dawn, you know, like before. For sure, <laughs> if not was, worse. Yeah. <laughs> and now it's like, it's so amazing. So talk to us about how you came up with the aesthetic or the dynamics of the store and what kind of went into bringing it to life today. Well, the fixtures, we had somebody come in and help us place, which I think is the number one step. And then we came in afterwards with all of our products, merchandised it. And really, we just want people when they come in to feel at home. Mm -hmm. So when you come in, it smells like heaven. It does. It smells really good. And the parfum is a really good touch. Yes, <laughs> yes. And then also, we just wanted it to be able to flow. So where women could be shopping, but men could be shopping, and they kind of can shop everywhere. We tried to pick brands mm. um, when it comes to candles and spa collection that everyone could use. Mm. So, um, but I think the most important thing, the first step was setting all the fixtures. Mm. So with the fixtures, you guys created the base and the aesthetic for the products? Is that kind of yeah. what? what so, and kind of the layout. So basically we chose where everything, as far as the big furniture would go, mm -hmm. and then we came in afterwards with the product to say, okay, this is gonna go here, the men's side is gonna be here, the women's side is gonna be here, here's where we're gonna put spa product. You guys have a lot of different types of products here from apparel to jewelry and to even candles and parfum. Like, how did you guys come up with like, uh, actually sourcing for them? How did you guys find these types of brands and what made you wanna purchase them? Yeah, well, we went to market, a lot of different markets, did a lot of shopping, and as we are at market, we, you always have a connection with somebody and as we would meet people and different vendors we would find products that we just fell in love with but not just the product we had a relationship with the vendor also mm -hmm. and i think that's really important as you open a boutique or a business to make sure like you have a connection with that person because those are the people that are going to also represent you when you sell out they're going to hurry to get you more product when you have a question about um, how something is selling and maybe it isn't selling if you have a relationship with them they're going to be able to say hey you know what not a big deal we'll take it back let's switch it for something else mm -hmm. so it's really important to find brands that you can connect with the rep also just don't you also want to pick your favorites but you want to make sure you have a relationship with the company too obviously you built a relationship with the uh you like the brands that you guys were choosing. Mm -hmm. um, what can brands do to stand out to buyers like you guys? So if somebody has a, a, a retailer or a boutique brand that they wanna to sell to boutiques or retailers, as a buyer, what makes those products stand out? Or perhaps what makes that email or that first interaction really come to you versus it just being a spammy type of feel, like buy my product, you know? Like, like what makes you guys kind of attached to the people that do reach out and do take the time to, to wanna to put their products in the store? That's a great question. I would say the store. Mm -hmm. um, everyone's story means something and I think if you as the buyer of the boutique so 
if you were the person selling the product to us, if you have passion and you have vision and you have a story and you share that with us and we can feel your passion and your, see your vision and feel your excitement, we are gonna be excited to represent your product. Mm -hmm. So that's how everything was chosen in this room. Um, people who had passion, they had a story, they believed in what they were doing. That I think is the most important thing, so. Uh, I think a big challenge that every business has is obviously the foot traffic, right? And like in terms of people walking into the store, especially when you're not in the mall area, and I mean, malls are even dying, right? So people aren't even walking those anymore. So what would you say is like, are some of the marketing initiatives that you guys have already put in place, because I've been watching, um, that has been bringing people in, and what do you feel is gonna be some things that people need to know out there if they're thinking about doing something like this? Well, Sean said it earlier, but to say yes to everything. Like anytime somebody asks you to do something, say yes. Uh, another thing that we've really done a great job is Instagram, social media, anything that you can do to be consistent and invite people to your page. Like when you go to dinner and you have a waiter that waits on you to be able to say, hey, we're business owners. We're opening a boutique in the arts district. You've got to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, whatever your um, social media thing is, but be consistent with it. Another thing that we've done is just word of mouth. And we're blessed because we come from a place that taught us how to do that. Mm -hmm. But really, everywhere you go, you have to, and you shouldn't have to, you should want to make sure you're letting everyone know like what you're doing, why you're doing it, why they should partake. Everyone wants to participate, but they just need an invitation. And so um, just making sure you're inviting everyone to your party. Every day to us is a party, and so make sure everyone knows you're having a party. That's actually a really good piece of advice is like you need to let people know because there's billions of people out there right right so it's not like you're telling everybody every time you're, you're sharing that story like there's somebody new out there that doesn't know about it and to this day coca-cola market stuff right and like you would think they had the market share like already locked in but there's a new person being born every day right and there's yeah. a new person that needs to hear about your boutique and your store so right about now you may be wondering how to best capture the sales at your store now people are either going to bring cards they're going to bring cash or they might want to do something online right now there's a lot of options available and even the banks that you do business with will offer you something but when it comes to opening up a boutique where you will also hold inventory that people can buy online through your e-commerce website there is one platform that truly stands out and i want to discuss it with you guys right now so you guys are using shopify to organize your your inventory and your sales yep. platform and everything yep it's on one and package offline. and just it, it it really takes all the guesswork out of uh out of, out of out of things so yeah especially like when there's uh because there's a lot of different options right i'm yep. sure like you guys were looking into square and to like uh light speed light speed yeah. and all mm -hmm. these like sales based type of things mm -hmm. what made you decide on shopify though like what was the thing that that really sold you guys on it it was um really just uh, the ease you know um in in being able to control it all yourself from the inventory management management perspective to um getting that inventory on a website before we had a brick and mortar and, and allocating some of that product uh, mm -hmm. for the uh, brick and mortar once we actually had a space and right. uh, we're up and running. So right. just being able to transition from one to the other mm -hmm. and, maybe, and maybe back to, that, to, the, to the original is gonna be um, uh, seamless. That makes you know, sense. So. Yeah. So like, the, and the reason I say that is because I always preach Shopify on my channel <laughs> and like everybody that watches, if you're a new viewer to this channel, you will know that I always, praise on Shopify for the for the for the functionality and the ease of use. Yes. And I think that if you're going to start something, you got to do it. You got to have that that system that can grow with you, right? right. So like right. you can start at a certain level when you're just getting started, you increase your package, but you never have to start from scratch. Exactly. And I think that's like the biggest hurdle that a lot of people have is when they're switching to new platforms, they have to like migrate all the products or mm -hmm. Or find a way to integrate the website to the Excel sheet that updates the the warehouse of fulfillment center with your product inventory, right. right? Shopify has it all in one, so that was pretty cool that you guys are using it. Yeah. This is not a paid plug, actually, but there is affiliate links down below. So <laughs> there we go. If you guys want to get started, click on the affiliate link for Shopify. Get you set up. <laughs> so you guys can see. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I wanted to leave this video off with just. Letting you guys know that regardless of where you're at right now, you guys can do this. You could take this on if you really feel like it's something that you wanna do. Um, as you guys saw inside, they really took a risk. They left their jobs, their full-time careers to start this business. It's not something that's easy. It's something that actually takes 
It's very hard, right? But I think the most important thing that you can take away from this is just knowing that you can do it and just starting with wherever you're at. You don't have to invest hundreds of thousands or even thousands. You could literally start with something as low as a couple hundred bucks to test out your idea and actually make it a reality. So that's what this channel is all about, guys. It's never been about, you know, trying to, trying to tell you that it's super easy and simple. It's just been about trying to help those that really want to start something because the world is always out there telling you that it can't. So we're just here to tell you that you can. So always make sure that you know that and make sure you hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed this type of content. See you guys on the next video.